Welcome back to BNC World Headquarters. COVID-19 has claimed more than 73,000 American lives and counting. It is a staggering number that continues to trend up despite America trying to reopen the economy. And here's another staggering number for you, 20.5 million. That's the number of American jobs lost just this past month. The 14.7% unemployment rate is the worst since the Great Depression. The black unemployment rate is 16.7%, 2% higher. And here to discuss COVID-19's impact on the black American workforce is Dr. Henry McCoy, Junior Director of Entrepreneurship at North Carolina Central University in Durham. Welcome to the newscast, sir. Hey, how you doing? Good evening. Thank you. And uh, let's start at the beginning here. In which areas have black American businesses been the most adversely impacted? Well, I would say that, you know, it goes across the board. A lot of African-Americans have gotten into areas such as tourism and, and hospitality and things of that nature. And so that certainly has been one of the uh, hardest hit areas around this. And we know that that those jobs are going to be very hard to come back. And so, you know, we, we talked about this whole idea of there being a nearly 15 percent unemployment rate overall. Um, as you mentioned, 2% higher for African-Americans. But the reality is there's probably a lot higher than that because a lot of firms are mom and pop operations, they're sole proprietorships, and um, a lot of those aren't showing up. And how much has the First Cares Act helped black businesses and entrepreneurs? Well, I would say that hasn't helped a whole lot at all. Um, I think we've seen the news um, stories about uh, who's getting the money. The earlier ways we saw the, the major companies like Ruth Crisp and others getting access to capital. Uh, and then even with some of those companies giving the money back, I say the, the ones who have benefited the most from it have been uh, white owned firms. And so uh, African American minority firms have really just been shut out almost totally from the, um, certainly from the first CARES Act. And uh, it's shown in terms of the struggle that the communities are having. And that leads us to the unemployment piece here. Unemployment benefit offices, I think we can all agree, in most states of the nation are an absolute mess with systems which are almost impossible to navigate. What's being done to fix that system? Well, right now, I think that a lot of states are scrambling and they are um, having major problems. Uh, as far as what's happening, going on in order to fix them, I think that there's still a lot of work to be done. What I'm hearing from individuals on the ground is that when they're calling, um, nobody's picking up the phone. They can't get anybody. They filed for a long time. I've seen some situations where individuals have um, been denied the claim and can't get anybody on the phone to talk to them. And so I think this is certainly showing the vulnerability of those technology systems that we've had across the board. And this is happening in the state, uh, state by state, so all across the United States. So what is the trickle down effect as far as day to day expenses, rent and education are concerned? Well, it's going to certainly have a huge impact on the overall uh, economy. But if you go down to the, uh, say, the micro level and to the individual household levels, it's going to end up continuing this kind of recessionary um, pattern where folks are um, they're, they're going to hold on to money as much as possible. A lot of folks don't have the money, and so they're just trying to get by with buying food, um, keeping the lights on, as they, as they say, keeping a roof over their head. And so uh, we can probably expect a very, very long um, um, and slow recovery as it relates to this. And again, we're still not even out the water. We're still dealing with this pandemic, and we don't know when we're going to have any kind of vaccine, any kind of drug. Uh, that can make folks feel safe. We have economies opening up, but folks aren't feeling safe enough to really just go out in full throttle. Of course, we see some folks doing it, but overall, many people are still shy about going out and, and spending money. And so it's going to have a huge impact um, um, for years to come. And doctor, uh, people need help and they need it now. The house is on fire and all we hear from government is be patient, be patient, help is on the way. But what tools are available right now to help folks weather this storm? Well, I think people really certainly have to be vigilant and, and really at this point, it's a combination of both, um, you know, I say uh, really pushing at the local level, um, calling up the, the city hall and the county commissioners and the social services and really pushing to get those benefits. And again, um, keep pushing on your um, your elected officials and, and things of that nature. In a lot of cities, what's happening is that people are stepping up and creating uh, individual funds and things of that nature that can help people. But I say people really have to just make their voice heard. And I know it's, it's hard because you're trying to get by day to day, but the uh, folks that are in elected office have to hear from us and they have to hear it loud. All right, Dr. Henry McCoy Jr., thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for being with us and please be safe.